I was basically on my lunch break the other day, and I just wanted to play around and see what I could, what I could do um, to make a talking tactile map. So the school that I was working was pretty basic. It was a very basic layout, and it seemed to me like it was just a series of rectangles. Um, so I started with the largest hallway, and I just come up here to insert shapes, and I clicked on the rectangle, and then I drew my rectangle um, on a slide. And what I'm doing is I just have it open in PowerPoint, and I'm just using shapes, basically. Um, but I think I want to adjust the color here because this is sort of like a weird grayish green color, so I want to make it a little bit more bold. Um, and I was thinking about doing this because I have a mix of kids with low vision, and then also one kid in particular who's more of a braille reader, or maybe actually two. Um, so I want them to be able to use this map together, and they're in a new school for summer school. Um, so I thought this would make it more fun on those really hot days when we can't really be working outside, and um, just to give them another way to learn about um, their, their new school. Okay, and I don't like the shadow that always comes here, so what I did was I, um, I right-clicked on the shape, and it comes up with the format shape menu, and I was able to choose the fill color, and now I'm unclicking the shadow because I don't like it. And because I want to build other shapes off of this main hallway, I'm also going to uh, make the line color. This is like the outline of the shape, the same color as um, my main shape. So I'm just clicking on the standard navy color um, for the main hallway. And I remember that off of this main hallway, there's like an empty space um, where the school had some windows and then another empty space where they had some elevators. Um, so I'm going to build that out too, and because they're extensions of the hallway, I'm going to make them the same color. So again, I'm coming up to the insert shape, and I just click on the rectangle, and I'm basically just putting another rectangle right next to the one that I already made here. Um, I think I'm going to shift this to the left a little bit, and because this is still part of that main hallway, I want it to be the same color. So. Um, you know, I'm building it as different shapes because I want to label them with different words. But it's going to look like it's the same space, even though they're labeled differently. So I put my mouse back on here, and I just right-clicked it again so I can come down to Format Shape. Um, the line, again, I want to make the line at the outline color the same color as the shape. So I'm going to go up to the, the fill and make that the same color. Um, and then I'm going to get rid of this shadow thing. I don't know why it's always on, but for some reason it always defaults to shadow on. So if I come back out here, it basically looks like a long hallway now with the big empty space up top. And the reason why I made it um, with two different shapes is it's just easy because I can just basically put two rectangles on top of each other, but it appears to be the same because it's the same color. And now also I can label it differently. So. This long hallway, I think I just want to, I'm going to go and right click it again um, so I can come back into the format shape. And I want to put alt text in here because I'm actually not sure how different screen readers might read this. So because I'm working on a Mac, I definitely want to keep the title box empty or blank. So definitely don't put anything in there because otherwise the screen reader is not going to read any sort of description. And in the description box, I'll just simply write long, long haul. Because when I teach the map to my students, I'm going to refer to this hallway as the long hall. So as you can see, um, okay, so as you can see, even though I put that description in the alt text box, that text doesn't actually show up here. But if a person were to be using a screen reader type of thing, um, they could actually cursor through and hit this shape, perhaps, and it would be read as long haul. Um, however, since I'm also going to have some low vision students using this map, I do want to have that label on the, on the long haul as well for those students. So what I'm going to come up and do is insert a text box. And um, now my cursor has changed so I know where my text is going to be. And I just click right on top of the shape. And I will write uh, long haul for them. And I guess that text is OK. I mean, maybe I could make it a little bit bigger, perhaps. Um, and so if I wanted to, I just highlight it. I can come up here and change my font size and maybe I'll just make it a little bit bigger. Um, okay, so that's the long haul and um, I don't know.
know, I guess if the students accidentally veer and go into this offshoot space, it's just an empty space um, in the school. There's nothing there. It's just windows that face the street. Um, but I would want them to know that they're somehow in this empty space and not in the long hallway. Um, so maybe I'll just label that empty space. Um, so again, um, I want to put the alt text in there, so I want to right click and then format shape and I come over to alt text and I leave the title box blank and I'm just going to put empty space and I click OK and that's embedded underneath the shape, you know, like it's encoded in the shape. Um, but I do want to put the text in there um, for both staff and students because we also want the staff to be using consistent language when they're explaining where the student is in the school. So empty space. Um, now, there's also some elevators over here in this area of the hallway. So, again, luckily this is a pretty blocky kind of school, so I'm just going to insert another rectangle off the long hallway, and it's actually, it's like about the size, um, another empty space here, let's see, we'll put it there, okay. And it's an extension of the hallway, so I right-clicked again, so I can bring up my format shape and I can change the color again. So I'll start at the fill, I'll make it that navy color, um, I want to get rid of that weird outline and make that the same color, I want to unclick the shadow, and then while I'm here, I'm just going to put the alt text there. So, um, hmm. I'm not sure if I actually want to label the space because the elevator elevator banks are off of this. So I'm going to leave this blank for now while I decide. Okay, so it saves my changes. So as you can see now, it looks like there's long hall with empty space and then there's this other weird space. So, you know, elevators in this case, um, luckily it's traditional and it's just kind of a blocky elevator. So I will put an elevator over here. And there's actually two elevators. Elevators are similar shapes or sizes, so I'm just going to hit Command C because I'm on a Mac to copy that, and then Command V to paste. So now I have two shapes exactly the same size. So those are my elevators. Um, and I think I want to make the elevators distinct from the long haul. So I'm going to right click, and I think I want to make it a different color than the long haul because it's a very different thing than the hallway. Um, so. Um, Let's see, I don't know, I'll make this like a happy yellow color. Okay, so I'm, I right clicked, I'm in my fill, I chose yellow. Um, again, I'm gonna make this line yellow, and then I'm gonna get rid of the shadow. And I know that these are elevators, so while I'm in the format shape menu, I'm gonna also click down here at the very bottom of my choices and hit alt text, leaving that title bar blank, and I'm just gonna put, um, and this actually is the bigger elevator, so I might put like big elevator. Um, in which case I should probably make the shape a little bit bigger too. So I'm just going to drag it out a little more because it is a little bit wider than the other one. And I'll make this one shorter, or I mean more narrow. Okay, but um, this elevator on the right, it's also an elevator. So I'm going to make that the same color um, so that, you know, the things that are the same color, it's pretty obvious that they're both elevators, but this is the small one. Okay, and I'm also going to come up and make that one yellow, and make the outline yellow, and then unclick the shadow, and then I'm going to click OK. And you might be wondering, oh wait, how come there's no text on the shape, right? So we actually didn't put the text box on there yet. So I'm going to go and insert the text box, and I'm going to click on top of this small elevator, and I have a feeling we're going to make this text a little smaller, okay? So I'll just come up here and put the font size at 12. I'll put small elevator, and um, the background is yellow, so that white text doesn't work so well, so I'm going to do Command A to select all, and I'm going to change my text color to, I think black would just be easy. So it doesn't quite fit, so I might have to make the text a little smaller. And yes, you might be thinking, okay, if I make it too small, yeah, it'll fit in there, but how are my students ever going to read it? Um, and for this reason, this is why I wanted to also make the talking map, because, you know, if you think about having to label all these things in a map, sometimes if you have too much to label, 
um, that auditory label is better because then otherwise you have a super cluttered type of map. So I just hit insert text box and I'm just going to label the other elevator big elevator. And again, I'm going to hit command all to select all the text and I'm going to change it to black and also make it smaller so it, it fits a little bit nicer in there. Okay. So, so far we've got the long hall, the empty space off the hallway, and then these elevators. Um, also at the end of the long hall, the right end, there's like a little short hallway that comes down. So I definitely want to add that in. Oopsies. Here's my insert shape, and it's a rectangle. And I'm going to just plop that over here at the end of the long hall. And because it's another hallway, I'm going to make that blue again. So I'm going to right click and then format shape and come up and make that fill that royal blue. I'll make the outline royal blue. So you're pretty much just formatting all these different shapes and then jigsawing them together. Um, and while I'm in the format menu, I'll just go ahead and put in that alt text as well, um, leaving the title bar blank. And this will, we'll call it the short haul. Click OK. And now um, it really is starting to look like a map, even though it's just a series of shapes that have been puzzled together. And I will insert the text box here. And I'll just type short. Oh, great. And that actually fits. Um, so this is basically how I build the map. OK, so from here, I finished the map. And now I need to get it off this computer and to my student's device, basically. So I'm just going to email it to my students. So I'm going to just save it on my desktop. And for the purposes of this, I'm going to say it's Diane's map. So Diane map, OK? I'm going to click Save. And now it's saved. And I'm going to go over to my email. See, attached. And I'm going to come down to my little paperclip icon and click that to attach the file. And I'm going to come down to desktop because that's where I saved my PowerPoint. I'm going to click on my Diane map. And I can either double click it or hit return or enter for open. Okay. So, okay, it turned blue. I know it's uploaded, it's there. And I'm just going to hit send. Now we've got Diane's iPad up here. and. We'll go ahead and check your email. Okay, so excellent. The email came through. Um, so the attachment is right here on the screen. Uh, it says see attach and then Diane map test. So I'm just going to click on that little um, thingy there for my attachment and we can see that there's the map. And let's see, um, why don't we turn on voiceover and just give us a quick check to see if everything transmitted okay. Triple click home very fast. We're just going to quickly check voiceover. Um, so I'm going to just drag my finger across the space. space. Long haul. Long haul. Small elevator, big elevator. Small elevator. Long haul. Short haul, short haul. You know, definitely with that tactile overlay, it'll give the student a little bit better definition of exactly, exactly the shape of a hallway. So. That would be a good next step to make that tactile overlay that would be positioned to go right on top of the map on the iPad.